Okay, we've got certification um, as the means of attesting to verifying, authenticating public keys for asymmetric encryption. We don't have to do anything with the private keys because the private keys are private. Only one person in the world is supposed to know them. So, um, now... <laughs> Let's go back to Alice and Bob. We're always talking about Alice and Bob. If anybody talks about cryptography without talking about Alice and Bob, you know they're lying to you. But anyway, uh, the uh, so if Alice is trying to communicate with Bob and Alice knows me and I have signed, digitally signed, Bob's key then Alice can, you know, pick up Bob's key. She can find that I have digitally signed it. She knows me. She knows she has my uh, public key so she can verify that I have digitally signed it with my private key. So it was me, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That uh, gives her, you know, trust that, yes, this is Bob's key. Um, so the question then of certification is who do you trust? And as I say, the, uh, the most common model uh, used in the, the business world is the certification authority. Now this is a body, a company usually, um, that it just signs and sometimes issues keys uh, they will you know they digitally sign the keys um, and there's different levels say you can have key signing keys um, but um, you have to have uh, this public key infrastructure and certainly they have to have it um, in terms of the uh, management of the key histories, the issuing of keys, the identification of the individual, um, the uh, attestation that, yes, this is uh, the valid public key that this person uses, um, that uh, this person's uh, public key is associated with the private key, etc. You know, all of these types of things that have to go on. Um, they're, uh, sometimes they will uh, deal with automatic updates for the keys. Um, uh, now, uh, sometimes it, you deal with time stamping because, uh, you know, keys will have a certain uh, expiration date. Um, uh, that you know there are all kinds of things that go into public key infrastructure uh attesting to the individuals um and it's got to be implemented properly and and the users and, and particularly the administrators have to have security training otherwise you know the core services in there are going to be unreliable you're going to have incorrect operation and and unreliable results and Unreliability, of course, creates security problems, uh, and and of course, all kinds of possibilities for implementation attacks in these situations. Um, you have to have uh, things like um, certificate revocation lists. Uh, if uh, I mentioned, you know, expiration times, so. Um, is, you know, uh, is this key no longer valid? Um, it, is it unreliable in some way? Is it uh, because it's expired? Uh, uh, you don't know that it, you know, everything is properly protected. Um, the, but sometimes it, a key is compromised. Um, and so you have to, revoke a certificate 
uh, the digital signing of, of various keys and, and say, no, this, you know, this digital signature is no longer valid. It's no longer appropriate. Um, now, uh, Microsoft, uh, I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but they had a situation where um, uh, somebody walked into the certification authority and said, I am from Microsoft, I'm here to pick up the keys. They issued them two keys. Um, and they didn't check until after he had left what they should have done in the first place, which was to phone Microsoft and say, you know, did you send this person to pick up the keys? Uh, because when they did make the call, uh, Microsoft said, what are you talking about? We didn't send anybody to pick up any keys. Not only were these keys, uh, therefore, improperly issued to who knows who, but they were not ordinary keys. They were, in fact, key signing keys. And therefore, uh, these keys were not just simply um, uh, keys that could be used to sign certificate, but they could be used to generate keys themselves. And these keys would, uh, because of the digital signatures and that sort of thing, be attested to by... Um, uh, by my, you know, the, the, they were issued by Microsoft. Um, the the thing is that this was part of the um, oh Active Directory system. What the heck? ActiveX? Um, no, mm, I have forgotten the term that Microsoft used for this this system uh, for verifying. Um, uh, Back in the the nineties, it's a big thing that uh, applets were going to be uh, uh, used and and reused, and and you were going to build uh, applications out of these uh, various functions that you could get. And in order to uh, verify that this code was was good, was not malicious, and and that sort of thing, uh, they had this system. And uh, you know, they uh, now had a situation where people could uh, digitally sign uh, programs, uh, say that this code was from Microsoft, and, uh, you know, it had been verified by Microsoft, and, and uh, people would accept it. So now, okay, you know, this has been compromised. Let's put this on the certificate revocation list. It was at that point that they realized, uh, Microsoft did, that they had never done a certificate revocation list for this uh, system. So, you know, they're stuck. Uh, that, uh, okay, that's uh, hierarchical authority. Uh, there's also... Um, uh, when you're dealing with this, of course, there's various uh, certification authorities. And um, now there should be one at the top, but none of the certificate certification authorities are willing, of course, to submit to somebody else as a higher authority. So um, what they have done is cross certification. They they will say, okay, we trust this other country company, um, we will cross-certify. They will uh, certify our top-level certificate. We will, you know, digitally sign their top-level certificate, and um, everything flows down from that. Uh, so, uh, in a sense, this, this system of cross-certification sort of acts as uh, a sort of root uh, certification, but um, in fact, it, it doesn't happen. Now, as I mentioned, um, there is the alternate model, the, the web of trust. Um, and, and again, um, you know, we can have uh, key signing parties, we can have individuals signing, and um, uh, as we, you know, uh, trust and, and know that, yes, this person um, is... Uh, uh, knowledgeable about cryptography and security and therefore you know we can trust any key that they sign or uh, 
we, as I said, you know, you can you can set your own level of of paranoia here and and say, well, you know, uh, I need you know four people or or ten people that I know who have signed this key before I will automatically trust the key. But you know, this, the web of trust can be built uh, automatically uh, on that on that basis. So.